Hi, my name is Wendy Finkley, Director of Programs for Arts for All Florida, and welcome to Spotlight on Art, our virtual art class program that allows you to enjoy some of the many teaching artists we get to work with all the time throughout the state of Florida. Today, we have Ms. Yaro Rees from uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, and she will pre be presenting to you a wonderful visual art and exploring program on creating a wonderful book about the environment. So please let me introduce to you today, Ms. Yaro Rees. Welcome everyone, my name is Yaro. Thank you for joining me today. I am so happy to be working with Arts for All Florida to bring art into your home. So today I will be teaching you how to begin a nature journal. A nature journal is a way of remembering and recording what you have seen in the natural world around you. Um, it could be from your window or in your backyard, a walk through your neighborhood, or even a visit to a local park. Um, on your walks, we see things that we can draw or trace and sketch into our journal, or we can collect things to bring back um, to your desk. I take a little plastic bag to gather up things that I find, such as uh, fallen leaves, spent flowers, seeds, fruits, um, or nuts from the tree or plant that I am observing. We also make field notes, and they're little remembers, reminders of what we can write into our journals, things that describe colors and textures, smells, how things feel, even what something might remind you of. Otherwise, I mean, if we, we, if we don't know the name of the plant or insect we're observing, we can make those detailed field sketches and notes and come home and do research to learn more about what we explored. So what you'll need to get started today is a journal, a sketch journal that you can buy at Michael's or Joanne. And I recommend the five by eight size because that's pretty handy to carry with you out into the field. You'll also need a permanent black fine pen. I use Sharpie pen. They don't bleed through to the next page and they have a very fine tip. You'll also need some pencils. I like um, to have a dark, soft, leaded pencil. And you'll need an extra eraser. If you have a pack of crayons or some extra crayons around, some um, felt markers, that would be helpful. You'll also need a little watercolor kit. Now you won't really need too many colors because we blend on the page. Mostly what we do in our journaling is washing with very dilute paint. So you can mix right on your drawing. A couple of soft brushes and a little cup of water to rinse your brushes. You'll also need a paper towel or a piece of old cloth. I like to cut up old paper, um, old uh, t-shirts to blot and wipe up spills. Also, it would be helpful to have uh, either tape or school glue. I use a glue stick a lot. You'll need um, some scrap paper to uh, work on before you go right straight to your journal. And you'll need, um, let's see, a table with a covering, something like that will protect it, either old newspaper or an old vinyl um, tablecloth. So let's begin. Um, so an art journal um, is something that you're focusing on a particular thing in nature that you're observing. We're gonna work with sunflower, a sunflower that I saw in my backyard today. 
And this is my journal page from that uh, sunflower. So I walked right out into my backyard and I noticed that there was a flower that had fully opened. It had been there a few days and I could see the beginning of the sunflower seeds that had started in the middle of the plant. So I'm going to show you how I built this page. We'll begin with drawing a sunflower. Now you're gonna want the sunflower to be the focal point of the page because that's what you're exploring today. So let's take your pencil and have your eraser at hand just in case. And I saw that that middle of the sunflower was really quite large. I'm gonna draw it about the size of a quarter. And like I said, I want it to be predominant on the page. So I'm gonna put it just above the middle of the page. And then the sunflower has symmetry, radial symmetry, like the uh, hours on a clock. So I'm going to use that as a reminder. I'll put my first petal up at 12 o'clock. My second one will come down at six. I'll go over to three. And nine. So what I have here is the beginnings of a plant or flower that has some symmetry. Now I'm gonna go in between the um, 90 degree angles I've created here and I'm gonna put more petals because this flower had a lot of petals. So they're like these, but they're slightly rounded. I'm gonna come in to those four corners. When I look at this, I don't really see as many petals as um, I noticed in the yard today. I did not cut that flower because I wanted those seeds to develop. So I am going to add a few more of these. I did collect a leaf. So in my basket I used for collecting, I found a nice intact sunflower leaf that the bugs had not chewed yet. And I'm going to decide where I would like to place that. I think I want this somewhat below the flower itself. So I will use this as a guide. Now, for those of you who are struggling a bit with um, starting your drawings, we, we could do a tracing, just a simple tracing. So put your leaf where you want it, and we're gonna come around it. I'm not gonna be real careful. In fact, I'm gonna make a jagged, sort of jagged edge because I see that this is a toothy leaf. It has edges that known in, in, in botany are called serrate edges, like a kitchen knife, so they're serrated. Now, when I turn the leaf over to the underside, I can see that there is a main uh, vein that runs from the tip of the leaf all the way down to the stem. Then looking closer, I can see that smaller veins branch off just like the uh, branches of a tree. Now, there seem to be maybe four of them. I'll put them in with my pencil. And then when I look a lot closer, I see that there are some very small veins branching off as well. Now, remember I told you that I had seen some seeds starting to set in the middle. I'm gonna draw what I recall last time I ate them to be some sunflower seeds. Now to define these, I like to put boxes. So it's kind of like a text box, but it goes all the way around what you've drawn. So just rough it in, it doesn't have to be perfect. I don't like to use a ruler because that's just one more thing to keep track of out in the field. Put in these boxes. Give me a little box for my seeds. So here we go. I know you're seeing that upside down. <clears throat> well, I know this is a sunflower, 
So I'm going to write up at the top of the sunflowers box, the word sunflower. Now that becomes the main theme of this page. Now we all know that's a leaf, but we're going to go ahead and re record leaf with toothed edge. And of course, the seeds that will eventually ripen. And I can go out there and take them and eat them. Okay, hopefully. Now I think it's time to add some color on here. Now remember what I said, we don't want to get really uh, dense with the color. We're going to do mostly just very watery washes. The color is a tool for you to remember the color of the plant or leaf or bird or butterfly, which we're going to draw one of those in a bit. So I'll take my watercolor kit. I want my scrapped paper and a soft brush. So remember, we're always going to wet our bristles first. Give it a little squeeze if you feel like you picked up too much and I'm going right for the yellow. So I'll put a little bit of water in my yellow tray. Maybe a bit more, work it around a little bit. Here's where you're gonna to wanna to use your scrap paper, make your little brush stroke to see if it's the right thickness. You don't want it too thick, not too thin. And we'll come in and we're, we're going to wash over those petals. I have a very soft brush this morning. I think I'll go to a slightly more rigid brush in just a moment. And because this flower had started to age, I saw some darker areas. They were more of an orange. So I will pick up some orange from my kit and just brush it through in certain areas, maybe some of those lower petals closer to the base, more darker. Well, I don't need to paint um, in my seeds with black paint. In fact, I think what I'll do is use my black marker and just dot in a few of the seeds to remind me they were starting to form. And, and then we're ready to do our leaf. The leaf again was <clears throat> more or less green. It had some brown edges. It was a very hot summer. I'm gonna test. If you can see that blue blot. And I'm just going to wash across my green leaf. Wash my brush and find my brown. Come in maybe with a little bit of brown to remind myself I'm going to stick a little orange in there too that this leaf was starting to go. If you put too much paint on your paper, you can use your blotter and just pick it up. So now I have a green leaf with some edges that were starting to fade on me. A little bit more. I'm going to put a box around sunflower, the word sunflower. I'm going to paint that. Just for fun, I think I'll paint that purple. Test on your blotter so it's not too dark to obscure that lettering. And I've got flower. Now, because I 
drew in the seat with the pencil. I'm going to come over them a little bit with my permanent black marker. I know they end up being kind of striped, as I recall. And I'll pick another color for that. Let's do let's do some dilute red. And I'll come out looking a bit like pink if we get enough water in it. And I will paint my sunflower seed box a pink color. Okay. Maybe I'll put something inside that. Oops, it's not going to be purple. Center of that sunflower to remind me that it was a little bit brown. Okay. Now, what color shall we paint <clears throat> around the sunflower to make it pop? Let's do blue. I haven't used any blue. Give it a little test. Blue is usually a very dense pigment. So you want to be careful. You get plenty of water in there. And then just come around as best you can with your blue wash. Sometimes I mix color right on my blotter page. It's easier. And picking up too much color in the tray. Okay, beautiful. Now remember I told you that I had seen a butterfly out there. I'm going to put my butterfly in here. Let's see. This is what we have so far. Do you see how we've got white margins? Let's put a butterfly and I saw a bumblebee. I found a blue jay feather as well. Got that blue jay feather is in my bag that I collected. See that sheen? It's a blue. Okay. So with my pencil, I'm going to put in a shape of a blue jay feather. I'm going to draw in the quill, which is just like in the center vein of the leaf. They have something in common. In fact, this vein pattern is called pinnate which is like the pinnate leaf, uh, uh, excuse me, like the feather, the pin feather. So I'll draw in my feathers off my quill and a butterfly. This is a small butterfly in comparison. I'll give it a little body, just real quick gestures. You're just sketching. He had some upper wings. And like all butterflies, he had some lower wings. They're not quite as big. And I saw some antenna. So I've just sketched a little butterfly in the corner. I have room over here for a bee. Again, ovals you'll find in nature. There's so many ovals. Just scratch out an oval if you see a little corner that looks more like the head. I think he had six legs and some crazy fast beating wings that I did not get a look at. We also have an opportunity now to come in and maybe use some stamps. We could blow in some um, uh, images that we find in different types of print media. Here's mine. This was my journal. And you can see how I added these stamped images here. And there's that blue jay feather. Forgot to paint him. Let's do, I have a brown marker. I'm gonna put those brown stripes on here with the marker. And it's just a school marker, but it'll hold up to that, like I said, very dilute brush of water. Okay, and there it is. So I feel satisfied with that, but you can always go back in and do some doodles, put some vines in, do some stamping. So every day you have the opportunity to take a look out, like I said, even if it's just your window or your back door, and try to record something that you notice in the natural world. Make a quick little sketch, a note, have someone who is assisting you 
to write down your thoughts about what you had seen. Um, if you don't feel motivated, I, I play a little game I call first bird and I go out and I just stare up at the sky and suddenly see my first bird. And this morning it was a morning dove. So I made a note in my nature journal and I sketched a morning dove. He was sitting facing me on a wire and I can show you that in the next video, which will be um, just some more in-depth ideas about how we are journal and some of the techniques that you can use to help you create a more accurate botanical journal. So um, good job, everyone. Uh, please comment below and share with friends. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Feel free to post your own creations on social media uh, using our tag at arts for all that's the number four florida at arts for all florida thank you friends and see you next time